situated in the heart of Mongolia is the district of Hujert. For most of the year, the temperature here doesn't get above freezing, and in winter, the mercury plunges to a savage minus 40 degrees Celsius. During winter, football in Mongolia moves indoors, but that's not the case in Hujert. Even in the harshest of conditions, the game is played outside. Ekembaya Damnin Suren resolutely coaches his youth teams out here. The man known as Titem, or King of Football, buys coal from the local mine to mark out the pitch. The ex-army officer welds the goalposts himself, and with the help of pupils from the local school, Titem keeps the football pitch playable, whatever the weather. When I grew up, kids just played football in the street. There were no teams, no coaching, nothing organised. Ten years ago, the Mongolian FA offered to train anyone who wanted to become a football coach. I got selected, and after I qualified, I decided to come out to the countryside and try to develop football here in Hujot. If I'd stayed in the city, I'd be in a warm sports hall right now. Not out here in the freezing cold. I've spent eight years working with these kids, watching them progress. If I was asked to leave them and go back to the capital, I'd say, no way, I'm staying. TTM originally formed a football team from the local school, recruiting just the boys in the class. But soon he realised that the girls were just as keen to play, so he set about creating a girls' youth team. Traditionally, girls here had not participated in any form of sport, and TTM was initially met with resistance from the girls' families. Yet the growing success of the team soon changed all that. I decided to enter our girls' team in the national championship. The parents were unsure at first, but eventually agreed. At that first championship, we won bronze, and when the parents saw their children with their medals, they were so proud. Their attitude changed almost overnight, and the team has gone from strength to strength. Since that first championship success, the Hujert girls team has really flourished, winning the silver medal in the next two seasons before becoming under-15 national champions for two consecutive years. Despite the tough conditions in which the players train, there's no shortage of girls keen to make the school's elite squad. When I was nine, I became interested in football. Our coach had just started recruiting kids for football training, so I joined in and now I'm captain. The cold doesn't bother us at all. You have freedom outdoors. You have space and can move around. When we have to play other teams indoors, you feel almost locked up and restricted. No matter what the weather, it's always best to be playing outside. 30% of Mongolia's population are nomadic. They're essentially animal herders, whose lives have changed little over the centuries. Their homes, or gears, are tent-like structures which are moved four times a year in order to find fresh pasture and water for their animals. It's an isolated life. When Titem began to recruit players, he travelled to many of these distant farms to meet the parents and encourage them to allow their children to come to Hujert to play. Nomads grow up on horseback. Children learn to ride from a very early age. As a result, they have better balance and better physical development than city kids. That's the reason why most of Mongolia's top sports people come from the countryside. 80% of the kids on my football teams are from herding families. They've grown up on horseback. They're used to being outside in all weathers, so their physical development and strength is exceptional. I always try and keep in touch with all the local nomadic families, keeping an eye out for the next talented football player. Osojin comes from a traditional herding family. While her brothers stayed at home to raise the family's livestock after the death of their father, Osojin decided to go to Hujert to attend school, living away from home for weeks at a time. And it was in Hujert where she discovered football as her mother recalls. Well, she didn't actually tell me about the football at first. She made the decision to play all on her own. Naturally, I was not too sure in the beginning. 
She was only young and quite little. But when she won her first medal and came home to show me, I was so proud and said, my child, you can play football if you want to. It's great that the children are so enthusiastic about the sport and they put so much effort into the game. When Transworld Sport was in town, it was Derby Day, with Huja taking on local rivals Harahorin, who hail from the other side of the mountains. Before the match, the Hujet team visit the Buddhist temple to offer prayers and to receive a traditional blessing. As the wind whips across the steps driving away the snow, Titem and his crew of local volunteers put up the gears that will serve as dressing rooms for the teams. Despite a few breakdowns on the way, the Harahorin team finally arrives. Our kids really want to win this one, and they should do too. The conditions will not make it easy. But as the Mongolian saying goes, the ball is round for everyone. The wind and the cold will be the same for us as for them. Still, as Hujut's coach and manager, I really think we have a great chance of winning. I'm Harahorin's coach, and it's very cold here. It's minus 20 Celsius right now, and with the wind chill, it's more like minus 40. But Mongolian country kids are tough, and I don't think there'll be a problem for our girls, because they're used to it. The game gets underway in the extreme cold. Hujet lies in the Orkon Valley, and the wind is funneled across the plains, making for testing playing conditions. Yet, if the players are cold, it's tougher for the people on the sidelines who struggle to keep warm. Not a good day to be a substitute. Hujet keep up their early pressure and eventually get the breakthrough just before half time. During the break, the teams seek warmth and shelter inside their gears. The players eat and drink some of the traditional nomadic energy drink, Irag, which is made from sweetened mare's milk. In the second half, with the temperature dropping even further, Hujet find themselves pinned back in their own half by a determined Hahorin, who are pushing for an equaliser. But on this occasion, the home team managed to hang on for the win. Football is really starting to become popular in our country, and I never miss one of Harahorin's games, home or away. The girls always try their best, whether it's summer or in the middle of winter like today. The coaches have become my friends too over the years. I always do my best to support them as well as the players. The most important thing that the girls can take from football is teamwork. We have a 15-year-old and an 11-year-old girl playing together. Despite the age gap, they get along extremely well and they become like sisters. The most important thing for me is that regardless of the success or failure of the team, we stay close. That's what football is all about, making friends for life. For the 1,000 people who live in Hujet, it used to be the spring waters that made their district famous throughout the country. But now it seems it's football and the town's all-conquering girls teams who are putting this remote but beautiful region firmly on the map.